tilt the camera this way a little bit. Is that a little better? It's a little better. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing something revolutionary, something new, fresh, something that's never been done before. We're letting the TV <laughs> we're letting the TBR jar jar in question. Pick my TBR for the month of April. If you guys watched my TBR video for the month of March, then y'all know that I picked eight books off of this bookshelf. 2024 is for getting through my physical TBR. So the eight books that I picked last month off of there with the numbers that are in here, I had to read them. I had to read them. I'm kind of going to do the same thing today, except where I picked eight last month, I'm going to pick five. I don't want to have to force myself to read eight books. So we're just gonna do five this month. That way I can get through my TBR and not be like, I should go to Barnes and Noble and get this new book that I saw on the internet when girl, we got books at home. We have books at home. I'm gonna go ahead and pick my five and then we'll sit down and debrief all of the books that I picked. And we'll also go through some of the books that are on my TBR for the month of April. But the other books that I have, I think I have five or six other books. They're just on my TBR, on my radar. I don't necessarily have to read them. like. I have to read these, but I want to read them. I have 17 in here. Did I say that? There's 17 in here because I got sent some more books this past month. God, it's not helping. I got sent some more books this past month and I think I bought like two. So there are 17 books on this bookshelf that are unread. Number 15. One, two, three, four, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 is unsteady. This is a hockey hockey ice skating romance. That's what it's looking like. I just got sent this book. I think it just came out. Number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Number six is the Heaven and Earth grocery store. This is not the typical book that I read. I don't even know what genre this book is. I got sent this book by Amazon at the end of this past year because it was one of the best books of 2023. I have a feeling I might DNF it because I just don't think it's going to be my style, but we'll see. I'm at least going to give it a shot. Number three, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I just realized there's actually 16 books unread on the shelves because I counted these two twice and these are the same book. Oh well, that's fine. I'm gonna grab both of them anyways because they're both beautiful. Attemptus of Tea. This has been on my TBR and I've been wanting to read this book anyways since it came out a month ago. I bought this when Taylor was in town and we went to Barnes & Noble. I'm just gonna put both of them aside because I wanna show you both covers in more detail in a second. Five. One, two, three, four. <gasps> Ooh! <laughs> Yay, this is so exciting! When I'm recording this video, I'm not sure if this book is out yet or not. I got sent the rule book by Sarah Adams. This is her newest book coming out. I didn't get sent an arc. I just got sent the book, but I believe it's not out yet when I'm recording this. I'll put when it's out or when it came out right here. This is a second chance romance. I'm excited. Last one. Number 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, fourteen. Fourteen. This is great. Wait, this book might have actually been picked for my book club. Let me tell you what it is before I check my book club's poll. Only When It's Us. I put this book and Unfairly Cute and Highly Suspicious as the two books we were voting for to read potentially for April. I think the poll is actually finished. That'd kind of be nice if it was this one, but I also really would like to read this book. So I'm kind of down for either one. I've heard really good things about this author. Let's see what we're reading. Oh, it has three hours left. Oh my gosh, it has three hours left, but let's try and focus on it. But highly suspicious and unfairly cute. I said it wrong a second ago. Highly suspicious, unfairly cute. It's winning by like 2%. Let's start with the first choice. Unsteady by Peyton Karen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I love figuring out what the books are about with you guys. Then you get my reaction in real time. So let me read the back. Reese, I love the name Reese and it's spelled R-H-Y-S. It's spelled R-H-Y-S. Reese is desperate to feel anything. Sadie wants to stop feeling so much. He's a hockey captain. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <gasps> There's gonna be a nightmare trope in this. I just know it. Plagued by nightmares and panic attacks every time he attempts to skate. 
Reese wonders if he'll ever play again or if he'll ever want to. Oh my God, Sadie has custody for her younger brothers and she's a figure skater with a bad attitude and frequent disappearing acts. When she accidentally witnesses one of the golden boy hockey captain's panic attacks and attempts to help him, a strange sort of understanding strikes up between them. Oh wait, I'm excited to read this. It seems like they kind of bond. Maybe friends, maybe become friends. <laughs> Next up, The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store, one of the best books in 2023, apparently. In 1972, when workers in Pottstown, Pennsylvania were digging up the foundations for a new housing development, the last thing they expected to uncover was a human skeleton. That kind of hooked me, if I'm being completely honest. I do want to see what genre this technically is. Okay, this is historical fiction. I'll give it a shot. I do feel like I will probably DNF it, but I will try. A Temptest of Tea. This is a YA fantasy book. I ended up getting another special edition alongside the Barnes & Noble one. Look at the frayed edges, that one. It's very beautiful. The inside of it is even better because it has all of the characters in it. I heard there's a lot of found family in this book and after reading Vicious by V.E. Schwab, I'm here for all the found family. So I'm excited to read about that. I know there's a mystery that happens within this book and there's vampires intertwined into this world, but there's like some sort of issue with the vampires. Calling on some of the city's most skilled outcasts, Arthi hatches a plan to infiltrate the sinister glittering vampire society known as the Arthrium. Arthi finds herself in the midst of a conspiracy that will threaten the world as she knows it. See, all fantasy books, the way they're described is so vague. It's so vague, but also you mentioned vampires and I'm hooked and tea. Why save the world when you can have tea? No, literally. The Rule Book by Sarah Adams. I just recognized that this has a shiny cover. How did I not recognize that before? This is a second chance sports romance. I have really been loving tension over spice and Sarah Adams is one of those authors that is really good about writing tension and having no spice in her books and I'm here for that. I really loved Practice Makes Perfect. I heard this is even better. Nora McKenzie's entire career lies in the hands of famous NFL tight end Derek Pender, who happens to be her extremely hot college ex-boyfriend. But then a wild night in Vegas leads to Nora and Derek in bed the next morning married. Oh no! <laughs> Lastly, only when it's us. This book has been advertised as enemies to lovers. If you've read this, I want to know if it's actually enemies to lovers or if it's just dislike to lovers because when I think enemies to lovers, I think you're out to get each other and it's cutthroat. But with contemporary romances, usually that's not the case and they normally just are annoyed with each other and just dislike each other. So were they like cutthroat in this book or not? I'm assuming they're not because the vibes I'm getting based on reading the back not giving cutthroat, which is fine. I love a good dislike to lovers too. Forced to work together on their final project, Willa and Ryder begin a game of pranks and practical jokes, both determined to emerge as a champion, but once they catch unexpected feeling, victory begins to mean something else, winning each other's hearts. Some of the other books that are on my TBR for the month of April, a lot of them are new releases. The first one being Wild Love by Elsie Silver, which I've talked about so much. This one comes out on April 9th. It is a single dad frenemies to lovers what are some of the other tropes i'm not sure if this one is cowboy i don't think this is cowboy i think this follows willa's brother if i'm not mistaken this is one of my most anticipated reads for the year elsie silver can do no wrong i didn't get an arc of it everybody that got an arc said it was so good if not her best which that is a bold thing to say because Heartless and Reckless exist. The Familiar by Le Bardugo. This is a Spanish golden age book and that's all I know about it and that it's by Le. And I do wish that we would be getting the third Alex Stern book, Ninth House Hellbent. We need the third one in that trilogy, but she ended up coming out with this one first, which is totally fine. I feel like I'm gonna love it. I don't know anything about it and I think I prefer to go into this one blind because that's how I went into Ninth House. The only thing I knew about that book was that it was Dark Academia. The only thing I know about this one is that it kind of has Spanish Golden Age tied into it in some way. I don't know, we will see, but I'd love to read it and I can't wait. Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I have heard this is her best. I've heard this is her best. I've heard it's so good. I also heard the FMC in this book has, I think she has avoidant attachment style, somewhat, which I have. So that'll be very interesting to read about. 
yikes, might be like punching me in the gut throughout the entire book. Abby Jimenez just knows how to write flirting. I really liked yours truly, the beginning of the Happily Ever After playlist, and I, if this is her best work, I have high hopes for it. And I can't wait to read the flirting between the characters because again, it's just so good. Seeing Red by, I gotta take my socks off. Seeing Red by Bailey Hanna. I read the first book in the Wells Branch series. I think earlier this year because someone recommended it to me because it kind of gave Elsie Silver vibes in the way that it was cowboy romance. And I really liked it. I thought it was really fun. I think I gave it three and a half, 3.75 stars. Alive and Wells is the name of that first book. The FMC in the book was running away from her abusive ex-husband and the MMC of the book was like the owner of the ranch that she ended up working on. That is just, the, that is, oh, ah! The second book, Seeing Red, I don't even know what characters this would follow because I don't remember any of the side characters from that first one. This follows Cassidy and Chase Red Thompson. Red, that's such, Red. Oh, they have the tropes listed here. <laughs> the first trope is the pregnancy trope. I'm a pregnancy trope lover. I am. Uh, sue me. One night together that they'll never talk about again until two pink lines threaten Cassidy's rule book and both of their reputations. She doesn't want a relationship with the tough and tumble cowboy, but he knows he's not good enough for Wells Canyon sweetheart anyway. Oh my gosh, they become friends and co-parents, but lines start to blur. Of course they do! This one comes out on April 24th as well. The last two books that are on my TBR for the month of April are both by V.E. Schwab. I have Vengeance and then I also have A Darker Shade of Magic. I would love to read both of these. This is my library book as we know. I went and rechecked it out because I would love to finish up this duology. Duology. And then A Darker Shade of Magic. I own all three books in the series. They're in there. I'm really liking V.E. Schwab at the moment though, so I have a feeling after I finish this one, I'm gonna wanna start another and it will be A Darker Shade of Magic. A Darker Shade of Magic? I have no idea what that's about, but let's read about it together. You're like, Heather, you literally are a book creator or whatever and you can like barely explain books. Okay, I'm just here for the vibes. I really am. Listen, I'm reading what this is about and I'm not really understanding it, but what I will tell you is the first sentence, Kel is one of the last Antari magicians with a rare coveted ability to travel between parallels london red gray white and once upon a time black i have no idea what that means but that's okay because i'm gonna find it out when i read it and you will too if you read it i'm just telling you what i want to read i don't know what it's about those are all the books that I am going to be reading or would love to read in the month of april thank you guys so much for watching today's video and i will see you guys next week Bye!